My name is August Simonelli. I'm a field product manager within the Cloud Platform Business Unit at Red Hat. I work with customers around the world on BU-led technical engagement. Today, we are going to look at an exciting option for deploying OpenShift into the public cloud, Red Hat OpenShift Managed Services. In this demonstration, we're looking specifically at Azure Red Hat OpenShift. Let's get started. Simply log in with your Red Hat account at cloud.redhat.com. Once in, you'll find many options to interact with Red Hat software. So let's go ahead and open up the Red Hat Cluster Manager to begin. Azure Red Hat OpenShift is jointly engineered, operated, and supported by Microsoft and Red Hat with an integrated support experience. It's available as an Azure first-party service, bringing true integration and innovation. So when clicking the Try It on Azure link from the OpenShift Cluster Manager, you're taken to detailed instructions to quickly get a production-grade OpenShift cluster standing up on Azure. And it's these instructions that we'll be following in this demonstration. Before we can actually start creating our cluster in Azure, we need to make sure of a few things. First, make sure uh, Azure Red Hat OpenShift is available in your region. You'll also need to make sure you have a pay-as-you-go account, uh, not the free entry-level account, and that you have enough quota for the standard DSV3 family of vCPUs. The initial quotas allowed are 10 vCPUs. You'll need at least 40. So just use the normal Azure process to request larger quota for that instance type and possibly for other instance types you might want to experiment with. Also, go ahead and get your OpenShift pull secret. If you don't have it, it's easy to find it from the Red Hat OpenShift Cluster Manager and to just download to your local machine. Now it's time to prep Azure for our installation. First, we have to register the required resource providers against our subscription. Resource providers um, provide granular access to Azure's resources. So in general, uh, you register a provider only when you need it. Registration configures your subscription to work with each provider. Some resource providers are registered by default. Some are registered manually in advance like we're doing here. And other resource providers are registered automatically when you take certain actions that require them. Uh, OpenShift on Azure install uses all types. So for OpenShift on Azure, we're registering the Red Hat OpenShift resource provider, Microsoft's compute, storage, and authorization resource providers. We could, of course, do this via the Azure uh, portal through the UI, but it's really easy with the CLI, so we just do it here. Well, to be totally truthful, we're actually gonna do the whole install from the CLI. So let's set some environment variables to make sure nothing gets set wrong. Okay, let's make this thing. First, we create a resource group. In Azure, a resource group is a logical group in which Azure resources are deployed and managed. We have to set a location for this. This location is where resource group metadata is stored and sets the default location for resources if we don't explicitly set them in the future. Now we're going to set up the networking for our cluster. So we're going to create a virtual network, which is going to have two empty subnets. Uh, one will be for the control plane and one will be for the workers. And we build all this uh, networking inside of the resource group we talked about earlier. And next we build out the subnets. We're also explicitly setting a service endpoint and that's because Azure guarantees a secure and direct route when we do that. Lastly, we need to disable the subnet private endpoint policies for that master subnet. This is required for the service to be able to connect to and manage the cluster. And if we were using the portal to do it, it would be the default. You can read more in the documentation. Now we're almost ready to create our cluster and we're gonna use a really cool command for this. It's the ARO create command. And I just wanna show some of the things it can do uh, through the help. Uh, you can set your VM sizes, you can set things about your networks, you can set things around uh, worker sizing, it can do a lot. So it's a really clever command. So now we go ahead and build the cluster. We specify the resource group, the name of the cluster, uh, the virtual network, and the two subnets we created, and I'm referencing my pull secret. And with that, it begins. In my region, installation took about 
35 to 40 minutes. You can track it via the uh, console in Azure, or you could use the debug command and you could watch it on the CLI. But in general, uh, it was completely hands off and I had a coffee and when I came back, it was done. And once the cluster is reporting complete, we now need to connect to it. So we use another cool arrow command to retrieve the details for the cluster. But one thing to note here is that we could have used our own domain name with the dash dash domain flag on the az arrow create command and then we would just set it up in our own dns here we actually have a random url uh, to connect to our cluster and there you have it with openshift on azure you have full cluster admin access for advanced customization and management this gives you full control over upgrades and uh, lifecycle management you also get a direct integration into things like Azure Storage, into Compute, uh, the ability to have um, scalable machine sets, everything. Uh, everything's multi-AZ, so you're getting just total control of your cluster. And of course, logging in from a command line, just as easy. Another cool integration with Azure is being able to configure Azure Red Hat OpenShift version 4 with Container Insights. And as you see here, Azure has found our cluster and has registered it as unmonitored. So let's go ahead and set that up. Okay, so what we're going to do is set up monitoring via Azure Red Hat OpenShift with Container Insights. Microsoft provides a script to set this up easily. Details on where and how to download are in the documentation. So you set your resource ID, your resource group, and your cluster name, and then you run the script, which does all the work for you. One thing I should point out is you do need your CLI to have access to bash 4, Helm needs to be installed, and the OC command. Um, but like I said, the script takes you through everything. Uh, it authenticates performs all the, uh, the setup, creates and uh, namespaces required uh, until you've got a working logging setup, which we'll take a look at in a minute. I'll go ahead and speed this up. Once the script ran, uh, the cluster was instantly monitored. You can see you go right back in and it's a monitored cluster. Uh, and then you've got all the various dashboards that you might need. Now, my cluster took oh, five minutes to start um, to start gathering data. I've advanced this a little bit further so we can go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the, the amazing amount of, of data that's being collected here. Insights is, is pretty cool. You can really dig right into the components of your OpenShift cluster. I mean, you can query things, um, you can get right down to the, the root of what's going on there. It's, it's pretty spectacular and absolutely worth trying out. And finally, deleting a cluster is as easy as creating one. Just a simple command, AZ, ARO, delete. When the command finishes, it took about 15 minutes in my region, the entire resource group and all the resources inside it, including the cluster, will be deleted. As you can see, Azure Red Hat OpenShift is pretty cool. It's an Azure first party service, jointly engineered, managed, and supported by Red Hat and Microsoft. It inherits all of Azure's compliance and allows you to use your Azure billing. Deploying OpenShift to onto Azure is it's easy, is fast, and provides a completely managed service that allows you to focus on your applications first. And best of all, Azure Red Hat OpenShift is available now in your Azure account. Go give it a try. And thanks for your time today. Bye.